Hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can configure your virtual environment and install white data synthetic on it. One of the main problems we see the community having is handling uh, a proper setting of their virtual environment. So if you're a beginner to data science or machine learning, maybe you are installing everything with PIP on your uh, overall uh, Python environment, which is not ideal. So imagine like um, having a little box to manage all of your packages. When you install uh, different versions of the packages or when you need the packages that have conflicts with each other or that do not work within the same Python version, you will have a lot of problems uh, following up with your development. So the best thing to do is to create um, a separate box, an isolated box with a specific Python requirements and versions that you need and with the specific packages and versions of that packages that you need. So in this way, you can have different uh, Python environments to work with different data science projects and everything works without breaking your flow. Um, one of the ways that you can do this is by using Anaconda, which is um, a distribution that lets you manage uh, these environments and packages. Uh, so the first thing that we are going to do today is install Anaconda, okay? Um, the, um, the installation takes a little bit, so I have already installed it, but you can go to anaconda.com and for instance, check here the products distribution and choose your operating system and just install it. As you can see right here, the Anaconda has um, nearly all or almost all uh, packages for data science, AI, and machine learning. Of course, most common, NumPy, Pandas, and so on. Uh, but what we are going to take mostly advantage of is the Conda, which is a package and environment management system. So we are going to be able to create um, virtual environments and install the packages using Conda, but we can also use PIP if the package is not available, for instance, in Conda or ConDaForge. Um, besides Conda, um, Anaconda also comes with the Anaconda Navigator, which could be interesting if you're a beginner to the field, because it lets you um, manage and see in a very visual and straightforward way which environments you have installed, what packages and versions are installed there, if they are installed from Conda or if they are, they are installed from PIP. So it is quite interesting to start um, with this. So I will imagine that you can download and install the package. And if you do so, you will have your uh, Anaconda Navigator launch just like this. So you see that it has essentially nearly all applications that Data Science works with, PyCharm Community, which we'll be using in this tutorial, the Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Labs, and so on. And you can see right here in the tabs that you have different types, you can create different types of environments with different characteristics. Um, so to start using Conda, I'm going to need for you to open your um, terminal. I actually have mine right here, okay? And once you have Anaconda installed, you will have this base uh, prefix uh, on your terminal. This is essentially um, called base because it, it is a default environment of Conda. So it, 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 it includes a Python installation and has some core libraries that Conda uses. Um, for us to create a new environment, we're going to need the um, Conda create command. So we are going to call Conda create. We're going to give it a minus N for name. And we're going to call it, for instance, synth env, which means our synthetic uh, data environment, okay? So it, it, you could call it my M, whatever you want. Um, right now I'm going to need to specify the Python version that I want this environment to work with, and also say that I want to add pip to install the white data synthetic package. One of the problems you may find when trying to install white data synthetic is you most often don't follow uh, the Python requirements in terms of versions that you need. If you go to our repo, you can see that right now the package supports 3.9, 3.10 um, versions. You can also check this, for instance, in the setup. 
right over here. Okay, Python requires above 3.9 or equal to 3.9 and below 3.11. So we are going to specify which version we need our virtual environment to have. So I'm going to put the version right here. So I want exactly 3.9 and I'm adding also pip, yeah? Okay, so essentially in a lot of packages are available through Conda. You can do, for instance, Conda install um, something, okay, your package. Um, if you cannot find it in Conda or cannot find it in Conda.org or CondaForge, you may install it through pip, okay? so. To gain the benefits of Conda integration, we are going to install pip inside this virtual environment and use this instance to then um, install uh, the packages that we want. So here goes nothing. Okay, the first thing is that Anaconda is creating our, our new environment. Then I'm gonna show you um, how this, for instance, operates with different environments, okay? We, it asks for us to um, install these new packages. We will see that it will also appear here on uh, the navigator. So we have the base and soon we will have the synth uh, environment. Okay, there it is. You see it's being created. And soon enough, we'll have it here working out. Okay, let's just clear the console. Okay, now we still are on the base environment. Um, and we can check, for instance, uh, all the environments that we have. For instance, if we say conda env list, so it's gonna show uh, all the environments that we have. Right now we have the base, which is the default, and the synth env. Okay, now we wanna switch to the base um, for our synthetic environment. So what we need to do is write conda activate. We are going to activate this environment. And the name. Oh, sorry. Okay, now you see that the base prefix has changed for the synthetic env prefix. And now we can see actually the packages that are, that are installed there, or for instance, the Python version. Maybe let's check the Python version first if everything went straight. Okay, let's see Python minus minus version. Okay, we see that we have Python 3.9.0 for our synthetic uh, environment. But is this the same that we have in base? Let's check it. Let's just first deactivate the, the environment. So we're going to deactivate. We are back in base. And now we can check the Python version here. Okay, it says that Python is 3.9.13. So you see, you have two different environments with two different um, Python versions, and you can have different packages on them too. Okay, so let's get back to activating our creative environments. Okay, now we can see also the, the list of packages that it has installed. We're gonna do on the list, and these are right now the, the packages that we have on this environment, okay? So our main goal here is to add the data, the wide data synthetic package as well, okay? So what we are going to do is pip install it, okay? This time within uh, a defined virtual environment. pip install uh, wide data synthetic, and we are going to specify the version that we want, which currently is 1.0.0. Okay, let's give this a go. Let's take a little bit. Okay, and then we can check, for instance, um, if the list has changed, which it will, okay? Um, just taking some time for everything to work out. Okay, there's a flow. Sometimes it's a little longer. <clears throat> right. Similarly, let me show you that you already have uh, the same time right here. It is updating all of the packages that we have just installed. Uh, and we could, you could also do the same here through the navigator. If the command line is not your, your thing, you can, for instance, go here and create uh, a new virtual environment, you could give it a name, 
uh, let's just call it my end. I'm not going to create it, just to show you that you can choose if you want Python or the air distribution. Um, and you can choose your specific Python version. Okay, here are the packages that are already installed on our uh, environment. We can go back to see if the installation is already done. It is. Okay, clear console again. And let's check if everything works out. Okay, so count the list again within our environment. And now we can look for where it is. The way that the synthetic package is now installed. Okay, so now we are ready to start um, using the, the package. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how you can use it on the PyCharm community, and then I'm going to show you how you can use it uh, on Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so let's start by opening up our PyCharm. Here it is. So right now I don't have any project. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call it synthetic data. Okay, and now I'm going to choose the interpreter, which is not a new, but the one that we just created. Okay, so I'm going to choose here the three dots. I'm going to say that it is a Conda environment and it is right here. Okay, so the synthetic environment it automatically uh, updated. Okay, and create. Okay, so now it opens a new window. Um, just let me put this. Okay, uh, this is the default of the way that appears. I'm just going to delete it. And now I'm going to copy paste an example that we have on the our repo. So let me go to the repo. Okay, and now if you go to um, the base uh, of the repo, the repo, you have a folder called examples. And I'm going to choose a regular synthesizer for tabular data um, models. I'm going to choose this example, the CTGAN with the adult um, data set. So I'm just going to uh, copy the whole thing. Okay, You wouldn't need this, of course, but let me just give you a, a very quick to follow example. Um, just copy paste it. OK, I can give you a quick, quick, quick overview of what this is doing. So basically, it imports what we need to create our synthesizers. Um, we have the data set information, the training parameters of the, the CTGAN. Um, and then we are going to generate uh, a thousand synthetic samples. Right now, I'm going to make some changes just because I don't want this to run for uh, a lot of epochs. I'm just going to put one. So this would take a lot of time for the video. Uh, and actually, I don't need to save the model. So I'm going to comment out these two lines where it saves and loads the model. And I'm going to run this. OK. So if everything works out great, this will show a little warning, which is related to the TensorFlow. Uh, but don't worry, that's not an error. What it, what it is saying is that TensorFlow is supposed to be fast. So the only thing that the message says is that it's trying to uh, use our CPU to make it as fast as possible, the progress. Okay, so mm, nothing to worry about, just to let you know. Uh, and soon we will see our newly created synthetic uh, samples being printed right here. Okay, there we have it, just our synthetic samples just created. Okay, let's see how we can do the same um, in a Jupyter Notebook. Actually, for the Jupyter Notebooks, I'm going to leverage our uh, navigator. Okay, why? Uh, because I think it could be simpler for uh, someone new to the area to launch uh, the Jupyter Notebook within the specified kernel that you need, which is this virtual environment we just created. So we are going to go back to the home and we are going to search for the Jupyter Notebook, okay? Notice that you have here your um, environment, the, the, the environment we, we just created. So we have the base and the synth. This means that if you install and launch Jupyter right here, it will use this environment. So it could be easier for someone starting out. I'm just going to install the Jupyter Notebook. 
And then I'm going to launch um, probably on the base and then on the scene for you to see uh, the differences. Okay, now we have our Jupyter notebook ready to launch. Let me just show you what happens if we are in a virtual environment that doesn't have Y data synthetic itself, for instance. Let me put it on the base root. And I'm going to launch it. Okay, it will open up um, our web browser. Okay. Let's yeah, just open here on another window. Let me show you. So it opens right here on our local host. I'm going to create a new Python kernel. Put this here. And I'm just going to import, uh, for instance, a regular, a regular synthesizer. I'm just going to run this cell. And since this virtual environment doesn't have um, why did the synthetic installed? It will throw an error. Okay, it says module not found, no module found, no 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 module name. Why did synthetic? Okay, so let's see what is the difference between using uh, the correct uh, virtual environment. So let's go back to the navigator and launch with the virtual environment we just created. Okay, launch. We'll open up in our browser window. Here it goes. We can do exactly the same thing. Create a kernel, create a kernel. And now, hopefully, it will turn the same warning that it did for the PyCharm community, which concerns the, um, the TensorFlow. So essentially, what we could do, we could simply use the exact same code that we are using on the um, on the PyCharm community uh, editor, and give it a go. Okay, so we have exactly the same output that we had for our PyCharm um, editor, and we can then use the power of Jupyter notebooks to start playing around with our data sets. Okay, um, on my end. Uh, it's almost everything. I just want to tell you that if you run into any trouble, you need help. You have a full community of data enthusiasts dedicated to uh, supporting you. So beyond our traditional uh, sessions, informal sessions on typical AI topics, you have curated spaces where you can find support on why data profiling, why data synthetic, and why data quality. Um, you can just create your own ticket, describe what's wrong, what's going on with your problem. Even if you have just a theoretical question, uh, we all come, welcome all contributions and we hope to meet you on the other side. Goodbye.